Hey, my name is Justin Case, and I'm going to talk to you about all of the issues I had right now getting my Helium Hotspot outdoor up and running. But before I do, please do like and subscribe. And I also want to talk to you about the Helium Vote. So, the Helium Vote happened, it ended, and yay! HIP 101 did not pass. So let's just look here. You see right here at the bottom, the voting is closed. If we go to it and scroll down, it shows that HIP 101 failed by 64.524 and 35.47 against. And if that confuses you, just remember up here under show more, it says the approval requirements were 67% needed to vote yes, 67%, and they only got 64.52. So it did not pass, and that means that they do not get more uh, of the mobile awards than CBRSs. It's just all based on equal proof of coverage. So yay, I was, I was happy to hear this. Um, and that also got me saying, okay, well, maybe I need to up my CBRS game. But before I did, I needed to finish fixing my uh, outdoor helium hotspot miner. So a few things that happened along the way, uh, unfortunately, with my miner, um, there were a lot of, I'm going to say, connection issues. And for those who are having problems and wondering why they're getting less rewards or want to know what's happening when they get their miner online, uh, while well, you can go under hotspots.hellohelium.com slash dashboard and look at your miners there and get some of the information from this page, a lot of it can come from Helium Geek. So if you're getting a miner and or, or a hotspot and decide to get it up and running, uh, you want to go and download Helium Geek, open it up on your phone. Um, you're going to want to switch the options in the top right. It might be IoT, so you'll want to switch it over to mobile. Then you can click that, um, uh, that search button right there, find the hotspot, favorite the hotspot, and then it'll come up in your list of hotspots like I have right here. So that's how you get it all set up and connected. Then you can go look at it, and I'm gonna use Sour Purple Mouse at the bottom as an example. And right now you can see I have a problem. Uh, you'll see that the reward multiplier is 50%. It's not at 100, or I should say a one, <laughs> which is a 100%. But for you right now, the biggest issue when you look at this, if you are trying to get your miner or hotspot up and running right now, you may notice that your heartbeat points are at zero, that it has no heartbeat and your radio underneath shows all red dots. That means you're in trouble. Um, and that's what happened to me. I was getting all uh, red with no heartbeats. You need 24 heartbeats, meaning a 24-hour period uh, where you it is able to ping your uh, your uh, hotspot uh, every hour, and uh, then it can get up and be activated, and you can start earning rewards. Mine didn't do that, uh, and so. I didn't know what was going on. The first thing I found out was that little ribbon cable that I did to put it through the window uh, was causing problems. I saw my ethernet lights on my um, modem were not the ones that were supposed to be green on one side, but they were the orange ones on the other side, which suggests to slow down somewhere. And it turned out to be uh, that ribbon cable. I don't know why the ribbon cable was causing it I still don't know right now. My other system has the ribbon cable and it's working just fine, but is what it is. So I got rid of those. I used a, just a regular flat ethernet cable that seemed to work, although it's harder to slam the, the window shut. But then I unplugged everything. I, I Well, to be specific, I unplugged the PoE plus connector and waited uh, about 30 seconds, then plugged it back in. And then within an hour, I got my first heartbeat. 24 hours later, I was starting to make money, but my reward multiplier was at 25 because something else was causing a slowdown. It, the reward multiplier was at, sorry, 
0.25 because uh, my speed measurement showed that I was only getting 47 megabits per second. Had no idea why. Um, had to move a bunch of stuff around and it brought it up then to like, here it is here, like this one, 88 megabits per second, uh, which means now 50%. So anything below 50 megabits per second, you're going to lose speed and get only, sorry, lose rewards and only get like 0 0.5, 0 0.25 rewards. Anything under a hundred, you get 0.5 as a multiplier. And then if you actually do it right, you get one. So the one is what we want to have. Um, it was like this for a while. Uh, I, I thought it might be the PoE injector. I bought a new one, replaced it, had to wait until another measurement of speed was taken. As it says here, last measurement was taken on January 28th at 7.42 a.m. for this one. Had to wait for the other one. So by the way, this is the, this is the other one that it was happening to. And as you can see, uh, just a couple hours ago at 7.26 p.m., it did the measurement and it said 117. You're good. So yay, I finally get um, good rewards. But you can see right now, if I look under rewards and I look daily, it shows yesterday <laughs> I had half the amount of rewards I have today and hopefully tomorrow that will double. So <sighs> that, that was hard. Um, at the end of the day, I think it was another coupler that I had as part of the network. I think that basically don't don't have couplers. If you can just have just one good Cat6 cable connecting everything, I mean, one from your uh, your modem to the PoE injector, uh, one from the PoE injector uh, to your uh, outdoor uh, hot Wi-Fi hotspot, then that's good. I also had then in between, like I said, uh, an, another, um, and I, I think that's the problem, but honestly, at this point anymore, I don't, I don't know. I'm just happy it works right now. Happy that I'm getting uh, the proper numbers, finally. So also, I, I removed a lot of the uh, longer cables, 100-foot cables, uh, and that seemed to have done it too. I, I, uh, I moved, I basically... Uh, Move, put a router in between that was closer to the PoE injector. So there's only a five foot cable in between, Cat6 cable, and that maybe that did it. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I was just trying everything, moving cables around, and it seems to be fixed now. Although I don't understand why that when the modem does a test, it only gets 117 megabits per second. But when we look at the Freedom Fi, uh, it gets. Uh, 616 megabits per second. I still don't get that. Uh, they're on the same setup. So still trying to figure those things out. But hey, point being is I just needed to get it above 100. I got it above 100. And if you're having these problems, you may, may need to look at your cables and figure out what's going on. Start with the bare basic cables and then work your way up to, um, you know, maybe having some, some couplers in there and see if the couplers cause the problem. And again, it could be the length of the cable too. So it seems like if everything is under, I'm going to say 75 feet, that was better. When it was, uh, everything was over 100 feet, that was a problem for me. Don't know if it's a problem for you. Anyway, that was fixed. Yay, finally fixed that. So now I'm moving on. And one of the things I'm moving on to is getting a new CBRS. Yes, I decided to take my fluffy latte marking bird from Freedom Fi and I am going to add a uh, 436H. Now that thing is like five grand uh, right now. You can get it from Helium, uh, from uh, Deploy Helium for around 4,500. Uh, luckily, I decided to buy it uh, before. The vote ended when um, Rack Wireless was still having the 20% off sale, uh, and uh, with a 3% coupon, I was able to get it uh, for about uh, 3,800. So ordered that, and it arrives tomorrow, which is horrible because I don't know if many of you know this, 
but it is next to impossible to get a antenna for it. So just a few thoughts on the antenna. Um, if you're looking for one, uh, I, I, I showed you guys uh, in a previous video the whole setup of trying to figure out the best antenna. The best antenna I said was this one right here, the KP3 Doma 13. This is the two type N female. And what that means is there are two connections at the bottom, not four. Will the four one work? Yes, but here's the thing, something I didn't know. The H36, sorry, the 436H uh, radio, uh, while it has four connectors, only two of them have been enabled for, uh, for Helium Mobile. So the best thing to get is this one right here. So if you're looking for an antenna, you want to get this one, uh, the, again, KP3 Doma 13. But here's the thing. It's not available. It says call for availability. It's not available. Uh, I called them after I ordered it to verify. They said, no, they won't have any in stock till April. I called some of their distributors. Uh, their distributors just basically drop ship from them. And they say, no. We don't have it available either. We're getting some other different options in the next 10 days. Maybe you can get one of them. So this is what I learned. I learned that uh, if it says call for availability, but it lets you add it to the cart, it means they don't have any in stock. So I had to look at my other options. And fortunately for me, uh, one of my other options, because I'm pointed at a very specific angle down one area, so this one here, this 18 dBi dual polarity 65 degree sector antenna worked great for me. And as you can see, available quantity, 99 in stock. If it shows a stock number, it means they actually have it. So I called, I verified, they do. But uh, then I didn't buy it yet. I was, still, I was still working on these ideas and making plans and figuring things out. And I thought they were open on the weekend. They're not open on the weekend. So uh, I'm going to try to order one of these this uh, maybe next day uh, to my house. Uh, and hopefully, even though everything arrives tomorrow, I'll get it on Tuesday. So that's that's my plan right now. Get it on Tuesday. Um, now, the sad thing of what I just told you, and maybe you didn't hear it, was that, that, that um, 436H... While it has four connections for an antenna, only two of them work. So that means that if you want something that goes in all directions, you need this Omni antenna right here with two connectors. Uh, if I get this one here, I can't get another one to connect also so, so that I have two antennas connected to the CBRS radio. Doesn't work, it only works with one. So that's a bummer. That's a bummer. Um, I, I really would then like to get the uh, 13 DBI one. And if I can get it, yay, I'm going to make that happen. Uh, but right now, I'm kind of kind of out of luck. Now, for many of you, I'm just going to mention once again the planner. The reason why I figured out this would work best is because I did some heavy planning. I, I went through and I first looked at how much that 13 Omni antenna would do, how well it would do. And it says here it would get 131 for uh, proof of coverage. Uh, I'm just gonna make it simple, 131K. So I wanted something close to 131K and uh, going back to my plan options, uh, I found that the 18 dBi at specifically the azimuth of 170. And as you can see, I tried 171 and I tried 169. I'm trying, trying to get the perfect direction. But at 170 as an azimuth uh, with that 18 dBi antenna got me 129K. So just 2,000 less. So you really got to mess with the planner. You got to look at the angles and figure out how well it works. 
Uh, it was interesting because when I looked at hexes covered, I actually compared this with the 15.5 dBi antenna. And even though the 15.5 dBi antenna with the 120 degree area instead of a 65 degree area covered more hexes, it still gave me less in proof of coverage because those hexes that were farther away were at a lower scale. Um, they just, they just, you know, it was a low connection. When you, when you go in and you play around with this and you look at areas, you can see where it's low and you can see where it's high and you can see where it's medium. And uh, you, you, it wasn't as many medium and highs as it was lows. So the 18 dBi, which gave me more low, more highs and mediums, fit the bill. So uh, at the very worst, that's what I'm going to get. That's what I'm going to order tomorrow. Uh, Got to wake up early, call them when they first open and have them ship it next day, like I said. So very excited. Um, we'll see if it works out. I will definitely let you guys know. Uh, and then there's the question of what I'm going to do with the other antenna. Because I don't know if you've noticed uh, this coverage map right now. So this area right here is what's covered by my CBRS. And this little area here is what's covered by my uh, outdoor Wi-Fi. Um, now, why did I put two? Well, because if you guys know anything about HIP, and I'm just going to go up to make sure you can see it, HIP 85, mobile hex coverage limit, you'll know that as it explains here, uh, it's based off of three. To ensure that only the best setups are rewarded, only the top three ranked radio signals in each res 12 hex will be awarded model coverage. So uh, I will still get uh, a number one uh, multiplier uh, for the best coverage on either of them uh, per hex. But then it goes down to only 0.75, which wasn't a huge amount in my opinion uh, when I calculated how much I would get giving it to a friend and putting it at their house. Uh, I still got I still got way less than I would at 0.75 at my own house. But now I'm going to be dealing with another <laughs> another CBRS radio. So just to be clear, um, each radio is counted separately, just like it says here, radio signal. It doesn't look at it and say, oh, well, that, that Freedom Fi gateway, that's one gateway. No, no, no. It counts how many radios are connected to it. So if you're looking to get a Freedom Fi gateway and figure out how many radios you're going to connect, my suggestion is two makes the most sense because once you get to the third, you're looking at a 0.25 multiplier, which is what's going to happen to that outdoor Wi-Fi hotspot, at least right now. I'm hoping that uh, sooner or later we're going to bypass all of this. HIP 105 is the modification of the Dow hex limits. Uh, so in this, they're looking to create separate hex limits for both indoor and outdoor. So it makes more sense then to have that CBRS and that Wi-Fi in the same location. So I hope they do uh, bring up HIP 105 soon and have us vote on it. I'd love to make that happen. And when they get closer to that point, I will start talking to you about this one. But hey, Thanks for listening to me. You can see all of the issues going on. If you do decide to get a CBRS radio, I suggest that you first figure out what the best uh, antenna is and make sure you can buy it and that it'll arrive in time because I didn't do that and that was bad. Um, and if you are just saying, I'm going to go the route of Wi-Fi, I definitely recommend that uh, you... Do some checking, verify your numbers, and then when you set it up, make sure you use Helium Geek to see that you have the heartbeats, that it's getting up and running, and then you use Helium Geek to make sure you are getting rewards at a 1, not at a 0.5 or a 0.25 uh, like me. I'm just, it was sad. I was sad. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, you, you learn and um, you learn by trying. So anyway... Thanks for watching. Have a great day.